Challenge accepted. I am doing the Index Card a Day Challenge 2023 put on by daisyyellowart.com. After two years of not doing this challenge, I'm back. I've done it for five years and I love it. So each week, Daisy Yellow gives a prompt a day. Now the goal of this challenge is that you create on an index card for 61 days through June and July. And what you see here are the prompts for two weeks. I'm already behind. I'm going to take this challenge and personalize it to fit my schedule and how I create. So I printed off the prompts here and right off the bat there are prompts here that I know I'm not going to do. They don't inspire me. I've got nothing and I'm not going to force myself to create something that I'm not interested in. Then I take the prompts and I'm doing some brainstorming. Right here first I'm brainstorming supplies that I know I have in my stash that go along with the prompt that she's given, with the theme, the motif something. Later I might put quotes that I know I have from my sentiment packs, some link to things that I know I have that I know I can use. This helps me organize it. Now I said I'm going to tweak this to fit me. So right off the bat I know I'm not going to do all of them. I'm going to pick and choose the prompts that speak to me. I may not do them in order. I may add prompts of my own at times. And you can do that too. Daisy Yellow actually says that. She said, here are the prompts. You can use them or not. The idea is to create daily on an index card for 61 days. You can get her prompts on daisyyellowart.com or go on Instagram to gypsy999. That's where I got these and I just printed them off. So now that my brainstorming is done, let's talk about what I'm going to create on. Now, Daisy Yellow talks about creating on index cards. Now, I don't have index cards in my stash right now and I refuse to go buy something new. So what I'm going to use is these five by seven card blanks that I have put into this DIY art journal. And I'll link where the video where I make this art journal. These are simply card blanks from Michaels that I've purchased and I'm putting into the different signatures. And I haven't been using them, so I wanna use them. This one is a six by six. I got some littler ones and I've got some bigger ones. And as you can see, some of these pages have already been broken um, with different colors and napkins have been put on. And I'm just going to use what I have. So this is what you're going to see me creating in. So let's go back to the prompts. I'm going to do prompt number two polka dots on there. And for that, I have this lovely napkin from Ninny's Napkins. It's called Aquial Rainbow, and we've got some beautiful, beautiful colors, and there's all these dots on it. One of the things that I'm going to do is try to use a lot of napkins in my iCads. It's again, something I have lots of in my stash. I'm peeling that off and I'm going to glue it on here. Now there was that red border there. I could have gessoed that out. I chose not to. It's going to somewhat show, but I'm okay with that. This was a, something I had planned to do a card on this and then the idea fell apart. So I ended up with this ring around, this red ring around on this card base. I'm gluing my napkin down with my fluid matte medium after I took off the two excess plies. This is giving me color. I've got the dot pattern and it's giving texture, which I absolutely love. And it's given me kind of an insta 
background. Great way of jump starting your creative process. Now I want to add more dots to go with that prompt. I'm going to put this in this envelope. I've made this envelope with just coffee paper to put cards in to keep everything clean. So that's going to keep my iCads neat and tidy when I'm making other ones. This is a homemade stamp that I made using Fun Foam, and I will link that video. And I'm brayering on white acrylic paint and then just stamping right on top. It's all about the layers. And I just spray it and wipe it clean. Now I'm taking some black acrylic paint and a lid from spray and I'm just going to add more circles, dots, what have you on there. I've added white and I've added black to the colorful background, though that adds contrast and really makes the background. And right now my background is pretty much done. How easy is that? Don't have a rainbow napkin like I did? Paint a rainbow, different colors, and then start adding the dots. I'm shading around to frame. And just add that black to the edge. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, please take the time to hit the subscribe button, then click the bell and select the option to be notified of upcoming videos. <coughs> if you are a subscriber, thank you so much for taking this creative journey with me. This stamp of a magnolia came from Ninny's Napkins. It was in one of the latest subscription boxes. So if you're looking for subscription boxes, you may want to check out hers. There is an affiliate link in the description box. Now, initially I stamped with my archival ink, but I prefer stamping with acrylic paint. And to get a nice even coat, I'm using my two and a half inch Ranger Brayer brayering it on and then stamping. This gives a darker stamp and it's slightly textured and I absolutely love that look. Now I've got my brayer out, my stamp is dirty, so I am going to stamp this flower filling up this scrap piece of copy paper. What I don't use on today's iCAD will go into my stash and I will have it at the ready for another time that I'm creating. So just brayer it on and then stamp. Whenever you use acrylic paint on a stamp, you have to make sure that you clean it right away. I give it a spray with my Murphy's Oil Soap and then I take brushes, a toothbrush, and get into the nooks and crannies and clean it. I cut everything apart and then I'm kind of bubble cutting. I'm giving a very, um, narrow white around it. You can cut right on the edge if that's what you prefer or give a larger white edge if that's what you prefer. I love how the white really pops off this colorful polka dot background, dot background. And no, I'm not going to make you watch me cut all of these. In fact, once I cut three or four of them and to play with on my iCAD, 
I'm going to keep the rest. Now for sentiments, I'm going to my sentiment pack. This one through the garden gate. I've got flowers. My sentiment packs are perfect for this because you can resize them. So I know I'm going to be able to find or make a sentiment that fits perfectly. Once I cut that one down, it's a little too small, so I'm going to use this one. And again, when you have the sentiments printed out like this, shrunk to the size that is usable for the five by seven, it cuts your creative time. You're not going to have to start or stop and go looking for a quote or creating a quote, typing up a quote or any of that. You can just simply go through your stash of quotes, some that are printed, and find a perfect one that matches. And that's what I plan to do. If you are interested in buying, purchasing some of my digital sentiments or the napkins that you see me using, you can go to ninniesnapkins.com. There is a link in the description box and a coupon code. Go and check it out. She's a lot more than napkins. I'm shading around the magnolia to make it stand out from the background. Now this, I could, this is on a card base, so this would make a nice greeting card if I was doing it something else. So you may choose to do your index card a day and actually make greeting cards throughout. And then at the end of it, you have however many, up to 61 cards to send out in throughout the next year. What a great way to make art usable. I took a Q-tip and adding some more dots along the border. You'll probably see that better in the close-ups at the end. Then I just want to give it some bling. And I'm splattering with gold paint. And there we have the first index card done. I have something to add to my sash. Sometimes I just even add it into the package with the stamp. So the next time I go to use that stamp, I already have it done. And then I'm just sliding it back into the signature. And we're ready to do the second one. So I go back to my prompt list and there's the prompt treble clef. And I know I have some napkins that have music on it. I know I have stamps that have it. I grab the napkin. Here's one set. These are much finer. I could use that. I have this larger one. And I'm not 100% sure if I got this from Nini's napkins or not. But this napkin, it's just black and white. And I know Nini has other napkins that are black and white and I'm going to show you how to use those because there's no color there you want to put a base coat of color on the background and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to put this in the envelope and I did give it a coat of gesso first and then I'm taking orange gesso and yellow and just blending it wet and wet on the background. I just want a modeled background. Now it gets a little bit too blended here, I gotta admit. I would have liked a little bit more um, distinction between the yellows and the orange, but I'm happy with where it ended up. This is a quick way of getting color on and you have some texture and pattern because it's not so perfect. 
Here I just want to add a little more yellow, so I add some white, and then I come back and put yellow on afterwards. I just want a colorful background that I can glue that napkin on. So I'm deciding exactly where I want it and I decide I'm going to take off a little bit of it from the top and bottom so I grab my this is just a round brush I didn't even grab my liner brush adding a little bit of water and then peeling off the excess Now this napkin was in my stash. I had already peeled off the excess layers. I, was, I guess I was planning on using it for something else and that didn't work, or this was leftovers. I'm gonna save that piece for something. I'm gonna glue that on right there. Now when you glue the napkin, it goes even more translucent. I'm using the fluid matte medium again. You can use Mod Podge if that's your preferred adhesive. My favorite adhesive is the fluid, fluid matte medium from Liquitex. I have a lot of success with it. Gluing that down, cutting off the excess because I want to use that. Nothing goes to waste. And putting a coat of the matte medium on top. And you can see how the color comes through. That black and white napkin has just shows. So if you have a napkin that's black and white or you've seen them and you wonder how they work, this is a way of utilizing them and it it's great. Now I'm taking a little bit of the orange, thinning the paint and splattering. Then I decide I want to add a little darker color so I'm adding red. I'm sticking to the basic, same basic color scheme, but with a little bit more contrast. I didn't want to use any stamping, but I wanted a little something extra, a little more color in the background, filling in those areas. I wanted to keep the music motif strong by not putting any other pattern on. Now, as you saw me do with the first side CAD, I'm taking some black acrylic paint on my angle brush and I'm gonna shade around to edge the whole thing. This is black, it's tying in with the black of the, the napkin that I glued down. And it finishes or frames your project. Remember, this same project I could do on a five by seven canvas board or wood panel. The substrate that you're doing it on is interchangeable often. Now I could have added a sentiment and gone from there and call it done, but I did go through my stash and figured out, okay, what can I add? I could have put a flower on, but I ended up grabbing one of Tim Holt's Crazy Birds that I had pre-stamped and was in one of my plastic envelopes, already cut out and everything. Even the beak was colored and the feet were colored. So all I have to do is put some gel medium, and I'm using gel medium here, not fluid medium, because this is on thicker paper, and I just find when it, something is a little thicker, gel medium is preferred but you can glue it down with your Mod Podge or your Fluid Medium, if that's all you have. And I'm putting that down, I'm perched him on the music. And I'm absolutely loving what I've made. I got my wood blocks out, and I'm just gonna stamp the sediment sing with black acrylic paint. Now, it didn't quite work, so I grabbed a baby wipe and wiped it down. The reason I can do that is because everything underneath is acrylic paint, and it's 100% permanent. 
So when I make a mistake or another mistake, I can grab the baby wipe, wipe it off and start over. You can't do that with archival ink. That's why I prefer stamping my sentiment with black acrylic paint. Here I'm just applying it with the makeup sponge, applying it down, stamping it down. When I've got short words that I want to add as a sentiment, I love using my wooden letter stamps. These I think I got from Michaels. I'll see if I can find some in Amazon and I'll link that for you because it's a good basic to have. Now I'm just going to give a little shading to this little bird, but I'm going to keep him white. If your background is colored, sometimes you can get away with color a white scent or white focal image. I could have painted him a blue that would have looked good as well. I could have added two birds there if I wanted. But for the size of this, I'm thinking this is going to work. I'm excited to doing the iCads because they're smaller scale. That means I'm going to be able to use a lot of my stamps, my focal image stamps for this that are often too small for my larger pages. I'd grab my Posca pen and outline the outside, dot the eyes, and just like that, the second iCAD, or my type of iCAD, is done. Simple, but adorable. And in he goes. I'll see you for the next video where I'm sure I'm going to do one or two more iCADs. If you're not doing the challenge, I hope you give it a try and join me. Love to see what you make. Post it on my Instagram at Creative Katie or on my in my Facebook group. Mixed Media Creations, Art Journaling, Mixed Media Creations. Until next time, go get creative.